Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'll be talking about Kubernetes RBAC. This is just not going to be a theoretical video. I'll also show you a live demo at the end of this video. So please watch it till the end so that you not only understand the concept of RBAC, but you also know how to apply it on a live cluster. So first things first, what is RBAC? RBAC or role-based access control is a method of regulating access to computer or network resources. This is a quite generic definition. Let's try to understand this in terms of Kubernetes. So I think you already know what is a service account in Kubernetes. If you already know about a service account, then let's say that you have a service account in your cluster and you want to grant the service account with bunch of permissions. Let's say that this service account uh, can list pods in a specific namespace or this specific service account can do a bunch of operations in a specific namespace or manage your entire Kubernetes cluster. To achieve any of these things, what you would need is you need to assign this service account with a role corresponding to that uh, permissions. And once you create a role, you would need to bind this role with the service account for which you would need a role binding. So overall, there is a role, there is a role binding and service account. So role binding takes care of binding a role to the service account or attaching a role to a service account. Let's say that, uh, let's take a very simple example. Let's say that a service account just needs permission to get list and watch pods in a specific namespace, probably in a default namespace. So this is the role that we would create. And once you create this role as shown in the image, what you would do after that is you would create a role binding, which binds the service account to the role. So I'll show you uh, how this happens using a live example so that you know things would be much clearer. Apart from that, you also have a couple of other resources like a cluster role and a cluster role binding. So we'll also try to understand what a cluster role and cluster role binding does and how they differ from a simple role and a role binding. Let's jump to the demo. So for the purpose of demo, I already have a Kubernetes cluster. So I created one just now. This is a plain Kubernetes cluster. It doesn't have anything. So let's proceed with creating a namespace. PQL create namespace test. So I just created a namespace called test. And within this namespace, I'll also create a service account. So this is how you create a service account. You define a YAML file here as, as I showed you, as I'm showing you. And uh, let's say the name of the service account is foo and it belongs to the namespace called test that we just created. So kubectl apply minus f service account dot yaml. So what happens is a service account called foo gets created, which is in the scope of namespace test fun now. So there is one uh, good Kubernetes command. So which can be used to understand the permissions asset assigned to this service account. Because we just created the service account, this does not have permissions to uh, even get Pods in the specific namespace. Let's say kubectl auth can I function as system account as foo. So this is the service account. What I'm asking Kubernetes is can I as service account foo in namespace test get pods? And the answer is no, because this service account is just created and it does not have any roles associated with it. So for that, what I'll do is I'll firstly create a role. So this is the role that I'm trying to create. So if you see here, this has permissions to everything within the test namespace. I'm not only assigning it with the permissions to get pods, but I'm providing permissions for everything. So API groups is star, which means core API group, and then you have resources as star. That means all the things that fall into it, like the pods, deployments, and everything. 
and verbs also start which means it can not only get but also create update delete and everything else so let me create this goal apply minus f sorry yeah so now let me run the command one more time the answer would still be no because you just created a role but you did not bind it with the service account so let's bind it for that i would need a role binding so here is a simple role binding and what this role binding does is it has two parts in it one is the service account and one is the role reference so it take it takes both of them as input and it binds both of them together so in my case the service account is foo and the role is test admin so let me run this as well so now let's try to rerun this command the kubernetes auth command and here the answer would be yes because now your service account can not only get pods but it also can create pods it can also create deployments because you assign it with the permissions to do everything in that specific namespace what happens if i change the namespace let's say i change it to cube system it would say no because you just assigned it with a role and not with cluster role i mean all the permissions that you have defined are the permissions like let's say that you have provided permissions for everything but you just use the binding or a simple role binding you did not use cluster role and cluster role binding let's see what happens if i use a cluster role and a cluster role binding so i got an i already have an example of cluster role binding and if you see here i'm using the same service account called foo and in this case i'm using a cluster role instead of a basic role so kubernetes already has uh, a specific cluster role called cluster admin i did not create this one so i'm simply binding this cluster role with the service account that we created in previous uh, slide so let's say qctl apply minus f cluster role binding dot yeah so once this is applied let's try the same command so now i am checking if foo service account can create deployment in cube system and the answer would be yes and it can not only create but it can do everything else in all the namespaces it can also delete and you can change the namespace to default because you assigned it with cluster role and cluster role binding it can do everything in that specific cluster that's the video guys if you have any questions please post it in the comment section i'll definitely reply to all of them and also if you want me to do a specific video on any concept please let me know thank you let let's meet in the next video